Ooh. Welcome on in, ladies and gentlemen. You found the right place. This is Grip TV Live, and today we got GT3 Top Split at Interlagos. We're traveling all the way to Brazil to bring you the Strength of Fields race right here on a Tuesday. Thanks everybody for joining us. This is Grip TV Live. Visit Grip TV Live YouTube, Grip TV Live Twitter, and our new Grip TV Live Facebook account. How is everybody? This is Season 2, Week 5, GT3. Oh man, and already this early in the week we've seen plenty of fireworks, let me tell you. I've even participated in some of these myself, and holy cow, the action is wild here at Interlagos. <laughs> Just welcome on in, everybody. Here we go. We're going to see these guys ripping and roaring through all 15 turns here at Interlagos. Let me tell you, this track is really something else. Used to be home to the F1. It's uh, wild, wild, wild stuff. Tell you what, we're going to move right in to Malone's turkey tips of the race. Turkey tip number one. Turn 12, turn 12, turn 12. Turn 12 is pretty crazy. They made a couple of different changes this year, this season, for the track. You can really cut over way over on the blue stuff and uh, try to set it up all the way. That's uh, that, right at the end of the track there. And uh, really try to get a good run. You're going to see guys going really far wide. And it's going to be something else. We got our Grip TV Live interns right on out there in the most dangerous positions. Ready to give you all the live race in action as it unfolds today at Interlagos. Holy cow, folks. It's going to be wild, wild stuff. Turkey tip number two. Turn one and two. Turn one and two. Yikes, you're, oh man, I tell you what, turn one and two, you really got to set it up. You're going to see guys going off track, getting punted, going sideways, flipping. And uh, so the main thing uh, for these guys to do is keep it clean going through one and two. Keep it clean going through one and two. It's a 30-minute race. You know, it's uh, they try to treat it like a sprint race. They really try to get a good start out there, but you got to stay clean through one and two. Keep it too wide at the most. If not, try to get in single file after turn one. Um, really, really uh, just some dangerous, dangerous stuff there. And also, turkey tip number three for the race today, brought to you by Malone, <laughs> is all the way going through. It's, uh, it's, it's turn 10, 9, 8, and 7. These, these are the really, really tight uh, turns in the middle of the track there. You've really got to get it way slowed down. Make sure you get a nice early, uh, get it really shallow entrance there. Use as much of the bumper as possible to be able to get a good run on it. And you got to take care. You got to keep it smooth. Can't be jerking the wheel left and right or that uh, back end's going to come around on you. So it's really important to keep it clean through there. And I know some of the Porsches definitely have the advantage in some of those tighter uh, corners uh, since those BMWs are, are just so wide and such a big uh, hood on those things and uh, it's pretty wild stuff out there so um, we got the uh, we got the big race for you today this is the Tuesday broadcast of Grip TV Live I'm Matt Malone you know me as Showdown 1983 and I'm going to be bringing you all the live race in action I'm solo up in the booth today, so it's going to be wild stuff. Hope to bring you all the all the all the good racing. Try not to miss any any big battles. You know we're going to see some fireworks out there. I'm pretty sure. And uh, just another thing about uh, uh, Interlagos here: uh, 15 turns. It's 2.6 miles. And, uh, you know, there's the, there's the straightaway after turn 12, but it does curve around and I've, you're going to see s some incidents, uh, going on because it's, it might be a straightaway and it might be full throttle. Um, but you got to be careful going too wide, uh, into some of that area. Uh, some of the weather conditions here, a track temperature of 82 degrees with the wind speed coming out of the east at nine miles an hour, 49% relative humidity. With uh, and the skies look like they're mostly cloudy, mostly cloudy skies out there. So you're not going to see that track uh, heat up too much, uh, given the clouds are um, uh, kind of uh, shielding some of that sun. So a quick 30-minute race, you're not going to see the track temperature heat up too much. Um, 
but we'll see how these guys are able to handle that. Um, like I said, 30-minute race here. Uh, these guys treat it like a sprint race. But next week, don't forget about next week, we're going to be doing 70-minute endurance races at Mount Panorama in Bathurst. That's going to be wild, wild stuff. So as we head on over to Brazil for the running of the Top Split GT3 race, Stay tuned, folks. It's going to be wild stuff. You, go, you got time to go get your popcorn, go get your lemonade, and you're in for a wild, wild race here. So we're going to head on to the track. Keep it right there. This is Grip TV Live. Check out the Facebook, the YouTube, and the Twitter for more information and to help us on out. So we'll see you just in a little minute right on the track.
Oh man, it took a while to get all the way to Brazil, but here we are folks, thanks for joining us. Oh man, they're right in their warm up right now, let's take a look at how they're gonna be gridding on up. Kimio Sumian gonna be starting this one out, sitting pole with a qualifying score of 1 minute 30 seconds. Light and fine, 130.4, starting second, Phil Blythe, third place, Scott Gray, fourth, Mark DeLuce, fifth place, Gerald Pokinon, sixth, and Dan Gionge, seventh, Tyler Jones, starting this one out, eighth, and rounding out your top ten, Andreas Almensberger and George Wiseman, going to round out your top ten, Diego Garcia, Troy Hetty, Darren Anke, Kevin Jander, David Gaudet, Eric Miller, Charles, Charles Jones, Bobby Bramley, John Dantzler, John Starkweather, and Ian McCaw, Barry Kennedy, 22 cars on the field. Oh man, you guys are in for a wild one. We're here in Brazil, Interlagos Grand Prix. And we take a look at some of the weather information here. Oh, 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 man, 11 seconds to go before they get gridded up here. It's going to be wild, wild, wild stuff. Thanks for joining, everybody. My name's Matt Malone, and I'm going to be bringing you all the live race in action right here as it unfolds. Looks like they're just getting, getting going here. Oh, man. And uh, we got uh, some... This is one of our interns on out there. This is turn one and two. Look for some fireworks there for sure. And as they get gridded up, that pace car going to be taking them around for a nice little short uh, pace lap here. As they get gridded up, welcome on in, everybody. This is GT3. It's season two, week five, right here in Interlagos. Oh, they're getting gridded up here. Take a look at the uh, ticker. Those are the guys' eye ratings. Eye ratings, more important than safety rating out here for GT3. These guys are getting all revved up, ready to go. Take a look at our leader right there. Oh, man, they got a nice little short pace lap, and we're going to be going green flag racing here at Interlagos. These guys are going to have to keep it nice and safe out there. Looks like we got quite a few BMWs, as we always like to see them out there. Oh, look at them all, folks. Looks like we got all BMWs. We got a Porsche out there. We got a McLaren. We'll see how the different vehicles handle this treacherous, this treacherous track here. Oh, and the pace car is leading them around. Our leader right there. Now he decides on when to go green. And we're going to see it happen. We're going to see everything unfold right here. Oh, look at him go. Through the winding, winding, winding track here. There's that really tight corner. And we got wrecking already. Hearing some uh, issues back in the backfield there that could be uh, issues there as somebody already picked up a 4x but here we go Kumio Simeon gonna be leading them off here that's uh, they're coming around here and I just wanted to show you guys one of these uh, turns here we got it all set up here that's that turn there where they're gonna be using a lot of that blue area there so be watching for that And that pace car is going to be pulling off, and we're going to go green flag racing here at Interlagos. Strap it down, folks. Kimio Sumian now, he decides on when to go. He may go right when that pace car pulls off. He may wait till green. And here they come. Pace cars off. Green flag, green flag, green flag. 30 minutes on the clock. Keep it safe. And there they go, there they go, there they go. Through turn one. Oh, there they go through turn one. Going too wide, see if they can all get through there clean. Looks like they do. Heading through Kumio Simeon. Leading this thing off here. We got light and fine, second place so far. 
We got some action here going in. Oh, going too wide in there to the McLarens trying to make some moves there. That's the number four car of Andreas Almansberger in the McLaren. Trying to keep it safe. Andreas Almansberger on the inside gets gets around the number eight car of Dan Gionge. Looking good out there in that McLaren. Back up to the front, Kumio Simeon off to a great start. He wants to create as much of a gap as possible, but Lighten finds right there in that interesting mad cow uh, paint job there. Take a look at the ticker. That is behind the leader. There they are using some of that blue runoff area. And coming around to complete their very first lap, Kumio Simeon's going to lead this one out. Very good start by most of these guys here. Got some action going on in the back. George Weissman looking to make a good run. He's got that number six car running tenth place. We got some action up there. The McLaren looks like looks like Andreas Almanbreger going to be going defensively here, going in turn one. Can the can the BMW? Oh, he's a little bit braver on the brakes there. The BMW that would be the number six car or the number and Tyler Jones looking to make a move. Now you're riding along with Tyler Jones looking to make a move here on uh, Dean Gange. That's the number eight car. Let's get everything going here. Is uh, We got E. Miller into the pit stall. Diego Garcia's. And that's uh, Andres Almansberger in that blue McLaren number four car. Heading around through these tight, tight little corners here at Interlagos. Got to be real careful when you're coming back onto the throttle. There's another really tight corner there, and the, the BMWs do struggle a little bit there as we see Andreas Almansberger get through nice and clean. And there's our leader. <laughs> okay, now here's this turn here. We're going to see these guys really whip it out there under the blue stuff. Uh, you do not get an off track for that. And here they go to complete another lap here in Interlagos. Oh, man. Going through turn one and two. Got to keep it safe. Really got it. It's all a one big setup there after turn one to be able to get full throttle through turn two and three. These guys are navigating it well. And you see the gap starting to form. Getting a little bit spread out, Kumio Simeon. Let's see what kind of a uh, a gap he's got. He's got already got a 1.3 second gap on light and fine, light and fine. Number two car running pretty good there, and he's got a 1.2 second gap on Phil Blythe. Phil Blythe and that number 14 car looking to make a looking to make a statement out there in week five here, season two, with that number 14 car. Very impressive. He's running that BMW. Looks like we got a little bit of a battle here between Scott Gray and Mark DeLuce. Mark DeLuce in that Porsche looking good there. And you can see that Porsche, how he's able to navigate uh, some of these tighter corners. But Scott Gray got an interesting paint job, part of the Mad Cow. See how those guys are using all that uh, extra track there. Uh, through that's, um, that's turn 12 there, heading up through turn th 13 into the straight pits here. And they're going to be completing another lap. Speeds, look at the speeds, folks. Up to 155 miles an hour. And then getting hard and hard, hard, hard on the brakes. Going into turn one right here. Breaking point, very, very important here. There's, a, there's some runoff there off of turn one, but you don't want to be using that. you got to get this set up because turn one is definitely a compromising turn as they filter on through, looking good out there. And it looks like Scott Gray is going to be making a move. Uh, that's Phil Blythe up there. Phil Blythe trying to hold on to that third position, but Scott Gray has got different ideas as these guys are just getting warmed up here. First couple laps in the books. Their tires are nice and warm. Looks like they may be starting to make some moves. And that's turn six and seven, going through nine or eight, nine, and ten. 
Uh, turn six and seven is very, very tricky. Uh, hard to know what line to take through there because uh, sometimes you get a little bit far wide and the track will just kind of push you out. But it looks like we got a nice little four-car battle here with Phil Blythe running third place. This is the battle for podium right here. And you're going to see them use a lot of the track. Let's see who's brave enough. And it's Mark DeLuce in the Porsche going to be taking all the track that he needs right there. Holy cow, let's ride along with one Mark DeLuce and see how he handles this. Mark DeLuce going to be using some of that draft coming up to turn one. Let's see who defends, who protects, who's brave enough on the brakes. They're going to make it three wide, folks. They're going to make it three wide going into turn one. Oh, man, who's going to be brave enough on the brakes? Those BMWs can step on a dime. Looks like they're going to have to give it up. Oh, no, and we got contact, folks. Contact between some of these guys. Oh, my gosh, it's, it's Phil Blythe and Scott Gray getting into each other. Holy cow, folks, let's try to take another look at it here. As we get an instant replay brought to you by Grip TV, let's see exactly what happened there as these guys were going crazy right off the bat here. Looks like they just really hard on the brakes. Oh, Phil Blythe went a little bit wide there. Get a little bit of contact. Holy cow. As they're getting going three wide again. Oh, man, Mark DeLuce. Be careful. He's got to protect, protect, protect. That's Mark DeLuce. In that Porsche, passing up a couple beamers, and that he is now third position, podium. But see if he can hold it, as he's got those beamers right on his tail. He's trying to hold them off here. Whoa, and he gets a little bit loose there. Gotta beware. And you can see those BMWs don't want to waste any time to try to get their position back. But this is the part of the track where the Porsches do succeed better, a little bit better. Uh, then the BMW is getting through some. Uh, the Porsches are a little bit more, a um, little bit more nimble. As Mark DeLuce gets way on the outside there, trying to make a good run, all the way through the straightaway here to complete another lap. And you can see from the gearbox of one Mark DeLuce. See how this comes into play. We know that the BMWs are able to break break a lot later than these Porsches. See how they handle it into turn one. Able to go single file, very impressive. And we see some more guys coming on through here. And that's a McLaren, gonna be bringing them home. Far chase up into the uh, up into the uh, turn one and two. We see the McLaren battling it out there. We got a guy coming out of the pits. And this battle still continues to rage on with Mark Deleuze, Phil Blythe, and Jerry Packernan is gonna get into some of that action. Scott Gray is not too far behind. Let's ride along on the uh, cockpit of one Scott Gray. And you can see how they try to navigate through these tight turns. You want to use a lot of bumper there on the right side. See the beamers getting a little bit loose there. That's easy to do. Got a lot of banking on here. Um, turn 8, 9, and 10 right here. See how much uh, space they use. Uh, coming up here, this one, this left-hander is all full throttle. Uh, turn 11. Going into turn 12, going into turn 12. Taking it pretty wide there. Got to get on the throttle as soon as you can. And there's Scott Gray just trying to keep up with that number five car. Scott Gray trying to catch some draft. And it looks like uh, Pakinen going to be looking to the outside. Phil Blythe going to be defending. Phil Blythe, oh, almost makes contact with Pakinen. Scott Gray's going to be there to maybe pick a position. So now you got Scott Gray due to Pakinen's uh, very aggressive move there. Now Scott Gray's able to pick up a position. Now he's running fifth place. Let's see if we can find any more battles here. We got Kevin Jander, Bobby Bramley running it. Oh, he's weaving around. That's Bobby Bramley behind him. And that blue and red number 11 BMW. And Bobby Bramley is going to look to make a move on Kevin Jander. Kevin Jander, keep it clean. Try to defend. They're coming up to turn. To that double right-hander. Take a look at our leader here, Kumio Simeon. Still got a pretty good, pretty good lead here. He's got a 1.4 second lead 
and we're going to see the uh, take a look at your ticket right now. These are the intervals uh, behind the leader. So it looks like uh, back in eighth place, Andre Salmansberger. Remember, he's in the uh, McLaren. He's about 12 seconds back from the leader. Heading into turn one, Kumio Simeon leading this pack out. 19 minutes left to go in this 30-minute sprint race. You can kind of take a look at the gaps here between one, two, and three. You got uh, Mark DeLuce in the Porsche there. Phil Blythe, Scott Gray, packing in Darren, Dan Garange, Andres Almansberger. You see them all filtering through there. Take a look back at uh, Mark DeLuce running in that Porsche. Very good to see. Uh, these cars are, it's all uh, multi-car, single class here, so you don't get any special points for winning your class because you got to get first place no matter what car you're in. Yep, that's turn six and seven, heading into eight, nine, and ten here. That one's tricky there. Head on to the gearbox of one Mark DeLuce, and he's got Phil Blythe, number 14 car, trying to run him down here. But I think if Mark DeLuce can get a little bit of a gap here and get Phil Blythe out of the draft, I think he'll be doing okay. As you see him using all of that, all of that runoff there, and even more of the runoff there on the exit of the turn. The Porsches are very, very good on exit through turn 12, heading up through the straight, and they're going to be completing another lap here. Just take a look at Mark DeLuce's lap time here is a 131.4, so that's definitely competitive. I know he had some struggles early on there, trying to get through some of the Porsches that, or some of the BMWs, but he's able to get out there and um, try to create some sort of a gap here. We're all rooting for you, Mark DeLuce, and he's doing the Flying Scotsman, trying to get, get, do everything he can to uh, get that guy off of him. And that is Phil Blythe in that BMW. Let's take a look from his cockpit view and see if he can't uh, navigate through here. Coming up to turn six and seven. Hard to know when to get on the brakes. Hard to know when to get back on the throttle. Hard to know what kind of line to take. And Phil Blythe gets a little bit loose there, trying to take way too much bumper there. And now he's not really in position here for turn eight and nine. Uh, turn nine right now. Uh, the banking there does uh, kind of unsettle your car there with the camber and the caster there. The uh, undulations of the track are massive here at Interlagos. And we got some nice little banking here. This is all full throttle. Heading on up. Don't touch that green area, but you can touch that blue area right there. And you see Mark DeLuce using every inch of the track as he possibly can. Trying not to get over too many of the bumps. Get back down on the throttle as soon as you can. And we're going to take a look at this guy's lap time as Phil Blythe. Ran a 139 last time. Let's see what he can do here. A 131.2. And they're heading into turn one. Keep it safe, fellas. Turn one. Turn one and two right here. A little less. The Senna S is what they call it. Looks like we may have a battle for 11th position. Uh, make that 12th position would be between Bobby Bramley and Darren Anke. And take a look at your ticker, folks, because these are the fastest laps these guys have been able to do right now. Bobby Bramley running 12th place in that number 11 car, looking to hold off Darren Anke. Darren Anke running 13th position with the number 13 car, so he's looking to make a couple moves and, and prove to the field that he's definitely got what it takes to maybe get a top 10 here. Following on the nose of Bobby Bramley. And you can see Darren Anke's right behind him. Whoa. See those beamers? They got some rubber already on the, uh, some dirt flung up on the on the BMW. Going to have to take that thing through the car wash after this one. We only got 14 minutes left, folks. This race is halfway in the books. 
who's going to be able to pull out those last couple overtakes to get those positions. Heading through to turn one. We got a nice little three-car battle right here. And we also got something going on with uh, Almondsberger. Almondsberger running eighth place in that McLaren uh, number four car. He's looking to pick up some more positions. He's playing a little bit of mind games on one Dan Gange. Uh, Dan, Dan in that number eight BMW. Uh, blue bomber with gold wheels. Looking good out there. Take a look at from the gearbox of one Dan Gange and Andreas Almondsberger. Very quick in that McLaren. It's good to see him out there as Andreas goes to the inside. And look on his paint job says it says getting nervous. Oh, I bet Dan, Dan number eight car definitely feeling the, the nerves right now. Such tight corners here, a lot of bumper to use. Try to use all 100% of the track here. Oh, and Kumio Simeon may have a little bit of pressure here as he's trying to hold off. Oh, it's light and fine, making a run here at it. Oh, light and fine. If he can, he, the gap now is only 0.7 seconds. Can light and fine try to do, try to make a move here late in the game with only 13 minutes left to go. Light and fine with that mad cow paint job. Riding along with light and fine, he's in. He's definitely got the draft. Does he have what it takes to be able to get caught up? It's not only being able to get caught up, it's being able to make those moves. Definitely the line you take here is very important. As you head on through, that's a small little compromise and turn to set this one up full throttle. Oh, light and fine using every inch of the track he's allowed to use as he tries to make a big run on him here. I don't know, it looks like Kumio Simeon may have had the better run there. As they're heading around, they're gonna be completing another lap. This is lap number 11 that they're completing right now. On to lap number 12. 12 minutes left to go. Who's it gonna be? Light and fine, Kumio Simeon. And you know Mark Deleuze is gonna have something to say about that. Actually, Mark Deleuze is about 11 seconds back right now. So the two, the two front guys here uh, definitely shot off right away and they've been able to form quite a gap here. But uh, Mark Deleuze definitely has got pace. Let's see what kind of lap time. Okay, this guy had a 130.2, and we'll check in with Mark Deleuze, who just crossed the line, and he had a 131.1. His best was a 130.9, so he's, uh, he's almost there. I don't know if he's going to be able to close an 11-second gap, but we are rooting for you, Mark Deleuze. Looks like we got some battles here brewing here with Phil Blythe. Almondsberger, George Wiseman, Almondsberger onto the outside. Whoa, Phil Blythe had some issues there. Not sure exactly what happened there, but Almondsberger going to be able to make that happen there. Al Almondsberger into seventh position now. And now we got Phil Blythe and George Wiseman battling it out. Something happened. Something happened with Phil Blythe. It looks like he may have a little bit of damage there. Yep, he's got damage to that left side. And Phil Blythe is not happy about that as he's definitely having some steering issues. Uh, not exactly sure what happened there. Must have gotten into the wall, maybe a little bit of contact, but that BMW definitely looks like it needs to head to the collision repair shop. Uh, just after this race is done though, he's gonna try to finish this one out with no repairs. Hopefully he can keep it nice and clean. And that is Should be George Wiseman right behind him. Yep, George Wiseman right behind him. Now that it should be updated here after they cross the line. George Wiseman on the outside of Phil Blythe. Phil Blythe with that damaged BMW still trying to make it work there. He's got positioning now, but look who it is, folks. It's Diego Garcia getting in the mix there. 
Diego Garcia. Now Troy Eddy's going to get in the mix with that green and black car. Troy Eddy looking to do everything he can. Oh my gosh, what are these guys doing? They're going nuts here. George Wiseman, Phil Blythe. Phil Blythe has to let Wiseman on through. Diego Garcia not going to be happy with that as Phil Blythe gets a little bit wide. George Wiseman. Nope, that was George Wiseman gets a little bit wide, allows Phil Blythe to get on by. Now Diego Garcia is doing everything he can. Troy Eddy and B Troy Eddy's trying to hold off Bobby Bramley. Oh no, that's a big old gaggle, folks. Gobble, gobble, here we go. Nine minutes left in this 30-minute sprint race. These guys are all lined up real pretty like, and they're heading on around through 9, 10, and 11 here. Oh my gosh, keep it clean, folks. We've already had some damage. And Diego Garcia with that beautiful orange and white BMW number nine car looking to make a move on George Weissman. George Weissman is still trying to work on Phil Blythe. Remember, Phil Blythe has got that damaged BMW, and he's still making it work out there. Look at him go, folks, as we take a look at the gearbox of Phil Blythe. George Weissman right on his tail. That arrow damage that Phil Blythe has is definitely going to come into play as they head around to make another lap. Phil Blythe defensive. George Weissman on the outside. George Weissman definitely making a run. Who's going to be braver on the brakes? George Wiseman on the outside. Phil Blythe going to be sticking it to him. Oh man, Phil Blythe still gets by. Very impressive. But I don't think George Wiseman's done yet. Is he going to try to make another move? Oh, they're going two by two. Phil Blythe looking to defend George Wiseman on the outside. Looks like he may get it done this time. And George Wiseman goes wide again. He goes wide again. He can't handle the outside there. And that may allow Phil Blythe to get on by. But it looks like George Wiseman may have positioning here onto the inside. This is turn six and seven here. The double right-hander. George Wiseman does complete the pass finally. And I see a uh, battle brewing for the lead. We may jump up there in just a minute here. But this one's just too exciting to leave right here. It looks like the uh, Kumio Simen Sumain has a 0.5 second uh, gap so that's definitely heating up we'll check uh, let's just check it right now Kumio Simeon going into turn one light and fine right behind him oh seven minutes left can light and fine charge all the way back he's right on the back of him now well you see light and fine's definitely got some pace looks like their lap times were pretty much pretty much the same there a 130.7 for Kumio and a 130.5 for light and fine as they battle it out here. This is the battle for first position. Six and a half minutes left to go. Who's it going to be? But we got Troy Eddy and Phil Blythe going at it. Uh, Phil Blythe on the inside. He's defending well this whole race. As it looks like George Wiseman did finally get around Phil Blythe. But Troy Eddy looking to do everything he can. Oh my gosh, they're going to make it three wide. We got Troy Eddy, Phil Blythe, Bobby Blamley in the blue car. Bobby Blamley in the blue car, taking the inside. That's pretty dangerous over there. He's going to have to break hard. And Troy Eddy does make that work there. Gets around Phil Blythe. Bobby Bramley now working on Phil Blythe. Remember, Phil Blythe's got some of that damage. And Diego Garcia wants a little bit of this action too. I'm keeping my eye on the leader gap. Looks like the leaders, it's about 0.5 seconds still. We're going to hold on to this battle. This is for... 11, 12, 13, 14th position here is a big old ga gaggle continues. And they're coming around. Looks like they're still lined up real pretty like with five minutes left to go. We're going to take a look behind the leader. Take a look. Oh, man, they're going too wide. Looks like we got some action here going on. Whoa, and we almost had some contact. Holy cow, folks, that's Diego Garcia in the orange car. And that's Kevin Jander in the blue car. Kevin Jander looking to make a move. Going into turn one, who's going to break sooner? Darren Anke in that black BMW looking to break early. Oh, and Diego Garcia takes the inside. Oh, and we got a big wreck. We got a big wreck. Oh my gosh, who was it, folks? Oh no, Phil Blythe having issues. We're going to take a look at that instant replay brought to you by Grip TV as Phil Blythe was heading into turn one. What exactly happened here? As he's. Oh, he's got some action there. Oh no, issues. And.
wowzers. That's not good. Try to keep it clean out there, boys. And we head back up to the leader, Kimi Osumi, is trying to hold off light and fine. Light and fine is working his way up the entire field. Oh, man, can Kumi Osumi with that number one car finish this one out? And only four and a half minutes left to go as they head for to complete another lap here at Interlagos. It is week five, season two, GT3, multi-car, single class, live race in action. And this battle for 10th place continues to rage on with Diego Garcia, Darren Anke, and Kevin Jander after Phil Blythe ran into some issues there. Oh my mama. <laughs> Here we go, folks. It's wild stuff. Diego Garcia doing everything he can to hold on to that 10th position. He's that number 9 car, so he thinks he deserves it. Well, let's check back in on our favorite driver out there, Mark DeLuce in the Porsche. Oh, man, he's doing pretty good out there, right in third place. He hasn't been able to cut the gap by too much, but we're definitely keep keep an eye on it. As, oh, man, oh, we got issues. Issues as uh, this is packing in, packing in, having some issues. What exactly happened? Take another look at it. This replay brought to you by Grip TV and, and Jer packing in. Uh, number 10 car running 10th place, heads into turn one. What exactly happened here? And he just gets a little bit loose off that bumper, off of turn one and two. Yep, and that'll do it every time as he tries to get going there. And Jared Packenden now in the mix here with Kevin Jander and Darren Anke's in that black car. Oh, man. The battle for the first place is heating up as Kumio Simeon is trying to hold back. Light and fine, light and fine to the inside. Kumio Simeon. Ooh, it was light and fine. It was just playing a little bit of mind games. Kumio Simeon just riding his own race out there as they head through turn one and two. Can Kumio Simeon defend, defend, defend with only two and a half minutes left to go? They're going to be getting that white flag here in just a couple minutes. Light and fine, playing a little mind games. Trying to do everything he can to try to try to shake light and fine or try to shake Kumio Simeon off of his game but Kumio Simeon able to race a really nice clean consistent race on out there today looks like Kumio Simeon just got this thing dialed in just right Holding on to those bumpers well, using every part of the track as he can, and he knows that time is winding down. And Light and Fine knows that his time is dwindling. On to make a move, Light and Fine, using all that track as possible, trying to make a good run at it through turn 12. Heading in to make another, complete another lap. Looks like they're going to have two laps to go after this. Complete another lap. Here we go. Oh, they're screaming now. Kumio Simeon not really taking the defensive line quite yet. I think he understands that he's got just a big enough gap here between him and Light and Fine to be able to not have to defend. Light and Fine does not get a very good turn one, turn two uh, little run there. So as you can see, the ticker is showing us uh, who's how much time is behind the leader. You can see light and fine just 0.46 or point, 0.4 seconds off. Mark DeLuce in third position in that Porsche is 15 seconds off the off the uh, leaders here. And the battle, Diego Garcia, packing in, still battling. Oh, and we got contact. Oh no, guys, turn one and turn two. Uh, got to keep it safe there. As uh, Pakinen gets around Diego Garcia, Diego Garcia in that orange car. And now Kevin Jander wants to take a gander at it. And Darren Anke is right there in that black BMW, just waiting. He's just kind of holding back. He knows these guys are battling a little bit too hard. And uh, issues could happen, so he may be able to pick up a couple positions. But these guys are really going at it here. Diego Garcia getting in the mix there strong. And packing in after he had some early issues. He's right there leading this uh, little gaggle here. And it looks like Mark DeLuce is having issues. Kumio Simeon.
Kumio Simeon. And we had the white flag there just a little while ago. Looks like Kumio Simeon's gonna be winning this thing. Take a look at this. Andreas Almondsberger, fourth place. Troy Eddy looking easy like he's gonna be picking up seventh place, and there they are, and they're on their final lap here as Diego Garcia, Kevin Jander are battling it out here. Looks like this is gonna filter out just fine. And that's Darren Anke in that black car. And that's how it's gonna fall, folks. Holy cow, we saw some fireworks here as Scott Gray takes his victory lap. Holy cow, folks, 30 minute sprint race. It was wild stuff. Some of these guys are just finishing on out here. Holy cow, wowzers. That was some wild stuff. We saw some overtakes, but Kumio Simeon does end up winning this thing. Kumio Simeon able to hold hold them off. Oh my gosh, Mark Deleuze picking up third position. Wowzers. So here it is, folks. This is how it fell. Kumio Simeon going to be walking away with that 50-pound gold trophy. And he wins this sucker. Interlagos, 30-minute sprint race. GT3, Kumio Simeon, first place, light and fine. Trying to make the moves. Trying to make the moves. He was .2 seconds off uh, when they crossed that line. Mark Deleuze, very nice in the Porsche. Picking up third position. Scott Gray, fourth. Dan Gienge, fifth place. Andreas Almondsberger in that McLaren. Getting sixth place. Very nice. He picked up three positions uh, since the start. George Wiseman, seventh. Troy Eddy, eighth place. And Jer Pakinen, ninth place. Tenth place goes to Diego Garcia. Kevin Jander, eleventh. Darren Anke, twelfth. Bobby Bramley, 13th. John Starkweather, 14th. David Gaudet, 15th place. John Dantzler, 16th. Barry Kennedy, 17th place. Charles Jones, 18th. Phil Blythe, all the way back down to 19th position. We know Phil Blythe was the BMW that had a little bit of damage there. And Eric Miller comes in 20th position and rounding out the top, uh, the 22 drivers here. Ian McCaw and Tyler Jones. So that's how it will fall right here. Oh, wowzers. That was pretty wild stuff. As um, these guys really were fighting hard. It was really something else to see. Oh, my gosh. And as we head on in to the post-race breakdown. And we're going to take a look exactly on how the results shaked out here at Interlagos. Oh my gosh, folks, that was a wild race. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We're just going to see exactly how many incidents and how much eye rating these guys were able to able to get here with this race. Oh my gosh, there's the official results are just coming in now. Your winner, Kumio Simeon. With zero incidents, able to keep it nice and clean out there. Kumio Simeon, congratulations to him for winning this GT3 race. We had a strength of field of 2968 so just south of 3000 just a just just under a 3000 strength of field here uh so very very impressive looks like kumio simeon going to be picking up 19 on his i rating which will put him at an i rating of 7349 very impressive but listen to this light and fine you know light and fine was trying to Reel in Kumio Simeon picked up two incidents, but did have the fastest lap, fastest lap time of the race with a 130.212. So our second place uh, BMW finisher, light and fine, with the fastest lap time, and he's going to be picking up 62 on his I rating, up to 4,500 or 4,053. So this race. Put light and fine just over the 4,000 I rating mark. So very impressive. Uh, congratulations to him. Mark Deleuze finishes third place with the Porsche with that roof. And he had a fastest lap time of 130.899. Picks up 56 on his I rating. Puts him at 3,916. Very, very impressive. 
and Scott Gray picking up fourth position. Dean Gange, fifth place. Andreas Almondsberger, sixth place. We're just making sure we got the correct running order here for you guys. Make it official. And George Wiseman, seventh place. Troy Eddy, eighth place. And Jer Pakinen, man, we saw those guys battling out. Jer Pakinen, Diego Garcia, Kevin Jander, rounding out your top 11. Darren Anke, 12th position. Bobby Bramley, 13th position. John Starkweather, 14th. David Gaudet, 15th. John Dantzler, 16th. Barry Kennedy, 17th. Charles Jones, 18th. Phil Blythe, man, that sucks for him. Phil Blythe had some issues, finishes out 19th place, but he'll be back on out there eventually soon. I'm... I'm Pretty sure about that. And Eric Miller, 20th place. Ian McCaw, 21st. And Tyler Jones, 22nd position. Holy cow, folks. We saw the fireworks. We saw them using all... They must have heard my turkey tips because they definitely used every single inch of that track. Turn one, they definitely uh, kept it clean most of the time, especially lap one and two. They were able to keep it clean through turn one and two so that was good to see now we did see some fireworks later on whoa man and those fireworks were blazing up good but uh, uh pretty small field here only 22 the race did get split three times gt3 is very popular and it's definitely good to see mark deluce out there getting third place with that porsche so my gosh that was pretty awesome and that was the tuesday broadcast don't miss the Sunday Strength of Field broadcast coming up this Sunday. It's going to be wild stuff. That was awesome, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget about the Grip TV Live uh, YouTube account and the Grip TV Live Twitter and the brand new Grip TV Live Facebook. Go ahead and like, favorite, follow, subscribe. It helps us out a lot. So spread the word about Grip TV and the broadcast if you like it. Tell your parents, tell your friends, tell your relatives, tell your next door neighbors that Grip TV Live is your place for all the live racing action. We'll see you next time for the next broadcast. Thanks, everybody.